Hello, I'm Alistair McGowan. Welcome to Football Back Chat, the video that's got all the footballers talking, literally. Excuse me, Peter, we're trying to film those houses behind you. Oh, sorry. I'm a little pixie trotting through the wood. Bluebells, daisies, all very good. Well, you know, the great thing about Liverpool is that there's always a real buzz about the place. And I think it's about time they got that wasp infestation sorted. <laughs> So, Dennis Wise, a bad defeat for Chelsea, a penalty miss for you. Does it make it any better if I do this? Uh, hey, <laughs> wanker. People know we're a wealthy club now, you know, and because of that we're getting a lot of thefts at this training ground. All we got left now is the goalposts, and uh, if we lost them, it'll be a tragedy, really, you know. Craig Hyder's Taylor's coming. <laughs> He's mad, him. If he can't see us, he can't pick us, can he? <laughs> Hide me, bloody. <laughs> Mares, he dotes and knows, he dotes and little lambs, he divey, he kiddle, he divey too. So, Stan mm. Collymore, you've moved now mm. from uh, Liverpool to Aston mm. Villa. How does the atmosphere compare at the two clubs, would you say? Well, it's really similar, Trevor, to be honest with you. It's like about 73% per, um, nitrogen and about 20% 20, 20 ox, uh, oxygen and about 8% carbon dioxide. It's what I've had all my life, really. Well, I was asked if I wanted to help with the training at Leicester, you know, and so I came up here and it turns out they wanted me to help drive the trains, which isn't quite the same thing, so it's a waste of journey, really, I'm afraid. <laughs> Do you know, I often wonder how much footballers take their job home with them. You know, like Gary Lineker. Imagine Gary and his wife Michelle on their wedding night. I wonder if Michelle turned to Gary after the big event and said, how was it for you, Gary? And Gary replied, well, obviously, it's the sort of thing every young lad dreams about, really, Michelle. It's a bit of a mecca, and I'm delighted to have finally got down there, like. But uh, it's probably not until I watch it back on the video later on at home, I think that's when it'll really sink in. But uh, at the end of the day, it's just a question of being in the right place at the right time, really, and attacking the space, of course. Gary Lineker, of course. Football's first Mr Nice Guy. That was his image, anyway. An image these days is an increasingly important part of being a professional footballer. I can tell you now the rumors are true. I have just found out uh, that I am a funny bastard love child of Frankie Dottori uh, and Stephen Hendry. Breath! Cameras on us again. After three turn rounds, all right? Two, three, four them. Hey guys, I go on, dance like a twat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, hey, hey. 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 My image, well, um, does annoy me a little bit that um, people think of me always as straight, you know, say I'm a very straight character, and um, I'm not that straight, I can bend my knees and bend my back, otherwise I wouldn't be able to play football, would I? Hmm? <laughs> well, we've come on in leaps and bounds here at West Ham, and there's one question mark hanging around the club now, that's, uh, uh, how did I manage to have such a good-looking son, you know what I mean, oh, Jamie's a good-looking boy, didn't get his looks from me, maybe from his mum, but you don't know, genetics is a complex, miraculous, arcane and wonderful science, when you think about it, isn't it? Hmm? Um, well, I know that it's a cliché. But I think today's game was a game of two halves, wasn't it? You know, it was half-hearted and half-witted. <laughs> so did Eric Cantona influence you, Ryan? Well, when a snail leaves a silvery path on the floor, does he expect you to follow him? And if an elephant never forgets, why do they never win mastermind, you know? Yes, then. Hmm? Well, maybe on putty puff. <laughs> we. <laughs> Some commentators are accused of sitting on the fence. Maybe they do. Maybe they should be replaced. Get rid of Trevor Francis. Substitute him with Victor Meldrew from One Foot in the Grave. Be fantastic. Because then you go from Francis saying things like, well, I think the lad's done very well there. You know, he really has when everything's taken into account. I mean, uh, he's done very well to get a shot in at all there. Because as Alan Parry was saying on the commentary, you know, it was a very sharp angle, wasn't it? You go from that to Meldrew saying, I don't believe it. How on earth could he miss from there, for heaven's sake? All he had to do was take the ball around the goalkeeper and roll it in gently with his foot. And as for Alan Parry and his sharp angles, he would know a sharp angle if you poked him in the eye with one. Margaret! No! Oh! Roll VT! So, Dean Saunders, you've played for many clubs here and spent a year in Turkey. What did you learn out there? Well, I learned a lot of things, really, John, you know. Uh, but one thing I learned in particular was uh, not to stick my tongue out at the end of sentences like, <laughs> well, that's a very unusual bit. Well, I know you're doing it now, actually, Dean. It was a problem that I had, um, you see, when I was being interviewed, and uh, I'd either stick my tongue out or I'd scratch my ear, like... And it, it was a terrible habit, really. It developed when I was at Villa, but, as I say, I've cured them both now, hopefully, yeah, I think. So what did you do in order to... Tongue out! <laughs> Some young, young kids joining in there, but I'm intrigued. What did you do to try and stop this habit, Dean? Well, I have stopped it, like... 
I saw a specialist in Istanbul, best in the world he was. My wife suggested it. And he cured me, see, so yeah. <laughs> well, I'm sorry to disappoint you, but you're doing it now, Dean, I fancy. You do it, I mean, despite the specialist and everything, you are, in fact, still doing it now. That, well, you, you, you say that, like, you know, but I know it's be better, because I had surgery, see, I didn't want to have to tell you this. But my tongue was too big uh, for, for my mouth, you see, so they cut a bit off. And it's better now, I know. Well, but, but I mean, you, you can't keep it in there, can you? I mean, you're trying hard now, but even now, that little tongue wants to pop out, I fancy. Doesn't it? Really? See, there it is. Well, I can't believe you're saying this to me, really, John. I can't believe it. I mean, I, it was very, it was very uh, Im important to me to get this thing cleared up, like, because it was making me a laughing stock with my teammates and that. And this surgeon, he told me he'd cleared it up, and he said that he'd stop me from scratching my my neck as well, you know, so I believe him. And this is unbelievable. Well, that's as may be, Dean, but our sound man here, just alongside you to your right, he, uh, he says... No, that, that's the director. Oh. That's him. Oh, yeah, big fella. Uh, he yeah. says that he is willing to bet 500, 500 English pounds, pounds, yes, 500 yeah. pounds, that you will stick your tongue out at the end of your next sentence. What do you say to that? Eh? 500 pounds. You up for it? Sure. <laughs> Honest, yeah, no, he's joking, a, in all seriousness, yeah. 500 pounds on the tongue making an appearance. Well, he must have money to burn then, John, that's all. Because I know that surgeon in Istanbul, like, he's, he's cured me, so... You see there, that was a whole, whole sentence there, wasn't it? I didn't stick my tongue out, did I? So, I win, I reckon. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> tongue-o, tongue -y. A lot of football commentators cover other sports, don't they? Alan Green does the golf, Barry Davis can be heard doing the tennis from Wimbledon. But John Motson never does any other sport. He couldn't. Imagine John Motson trying to do the tennis from Wimbledon. It wouldn't work. Well, there's Tim Henman now, on the ball there. And he's, well, he's given the ball away there, Tim Henman. He was under no pressure whatsoever there, the young Briton, and he's given the ball away to Michael Steak, who's given it straight back to Tim Henman, who gives it back to Michael Steak, who gives, well, neither player here. <laughs> seeming to want to keep possession of this ball at all. Well, what on earth is going on out there? <laughs> he couldn't do it. Yeah, I like playing football, you know, especially on grass, you know, because uh, I played recently on an all-weather pitch, and well, it was awful. You got ten minutes of rain, ten minutes of sun, ten minutes of wind, hurricanes, all weathers. It's terrible, really, yeah. But football, of course, is a very precarious sport. It's always worth having another skill up your sleeve. You never know when you might need it. Now, feel the quality of this material here, ladies. You see, that's nylon, isn't it? Nasty, yeah, you, see? Nylon, you see. Yeah. But this one I'm trying to sell, it's a lovely cotton, is that? You see, you yeah. can scrunch it up. Yeah. I'm selling these all over the country. They love them, the ladies, because you can, uh, don't need to iron them, you see. You can reshape while damp. Do you see? While damp. Yeah, don't want Now, come on. Have, have, I, got, have I got a sale? Yeah, you want, yeah, you want one, don't you? I don't want them. Do you want a change? Jason, get a couple of dozen off the van. We've got a sale here, son. I can't Pesitas, give Pesitas. you any money without a checkbook or a guarantee card, all right? Pesitas, Pesitas. This is my first day at the Banca Catalan. I'd like to uh, welcome you all here this afternoon to discuss my new uh, venture, as it were. Mr Venables Cakes, they are performance enhancing and they're quite legal before we get into all that. I've got some over here you can have a look at. And uh, Gary here, he's tried them. He uh, liked them, didn't you? <laughs> What am I supposed to do with him Pesitas, then? I don't know Pesitas. what to do. He wants money. I, I want, want some potatoes because I have a very hungry I want to give you money. I want to give Thank you money. You. A lot of managers are doing this sort of thing now. I know Jack Charlton's got a similar kind of business going. And I must admit, I did have a little bit of a pain in my side before I came out. But I think it's gone now. Nothing to worry about, you know. But, um... Oh, sorry. I thought I was going to be sick then. No, I think they are... Oh, dear. Sorry, I burnt something up. Do you want these goldfish? No. Or not? Yeah, I no. thought you said you wanted them. He People are changing their minds all the time. They say they want one, and, and then they don't want them. I've got dead goldfish laying around all over the floor. Look, poor little things. You see them? I love commentating for ITV uh, alongside Brian Moore. You know, he's a great bloke, is Brian. He knows the score, and if, if he doesn't, they put it in the corner of the screen for him, you know, which is so clever, really, you know. I would give you money. It's not my money to give to you, is it? Otherwise, I want my I'd... money. It's a bank. Well, I've decided, finally, that... Cricket was a bit um, boring as a sport, so I gave it up and I've come out here to Tenerife and I'm driving a taxi now and it's a great job, you get to meet nice people and I'm that good at it, I don't need to look at the road when I'm driving. Sometimes they put us down low to commentate, which is alright. 
sometimes we'll be onside at pitch, you know, other times they'll put us right up high and uh, sometimes you'll be in floodlights, you know, it's a bit precarious. But uh, Brian is terrific and uh, how he does that and plays rugby for England, that's a great makeup job, isn't it? Look, I've had this all day, I don't know, I've had enough. I've had it. I've had it bloody up to here, this job. I tell you, I should never have given up the football. You can sod this job and sod the bloody job. Yes, nice to see Jack Charlton in amongst that lot. Do you know, I never understood how Jack Charlton ever picked a team to play for the Republic of Ireland when he was manager. Because when he's used as an expert on TV, right, he can never remember the names of any players in any team. So how did he pick his squad to play for the Republic of Ireland? I bet he put his team sheet up on the dressing room wall and it read like, Number one. That lad who plays in goals for Sheffield What's it? Number two, his mate. Number three, Stanton, Staunton, Swinton Insurance. I can't remember his bloody name. Number four, the alcoholic from Aston Villa. Number five, your man. Number six, the big fella. Number seven, the nice salmon trout that I caught last week when I was fishing down Waterford Ways. I'll have a jump at him. Number eight, Houghton, Houghton, Hetton, Heaton. Someone that were Liverpool or other, I don't know. Number nine, the tall lad who used to play for uh, Arsenal. Number ten, Cascarino, ice cream salesman. What do you call him? And number eleven, the one who was actually born in the Republic of Ireland. Hell yeah, hell yeah. How did you get so many people here now, Jack? I told them we were the bloody Beatles, you know. <laughs> you seem to have your bib on back to front. Did you know that? Yeah, well, all the lads do it. It's not just, not just me, is it? Uh, I hereby declare uh, that on behalf of Southampton Football Club um, that I, Laurie McManamy, have the deepest voice in football, if not the whole world. So, Gianfranco, are you happy at Chelsea? Hmm? Happy. You. Are you happy? Happy. Are you happy? happy -o. Happy. Are you happy at Chelsea? Happy? -o? Yes, happy. Uh, ten past three. No, not ten past three. <laughs> <laughs> oh, bloody <laughs> hell. Is it true what they say, Mr. Kelly? Oi! Is it true about you being the woman, Mr. Kelly? So, you had a good time last night then? On the town? Yeah. It was all right. We, you know, we nicked a few traffic cones and put them on the training pitch behind me, like, for a laugh. A oh, woman. That's terrible, Graham. What? Just say some English Shit. words you know. Uh, right. Happy o? English. Ten past three. Yeah. Import, uh, import, importante. Uh, his cap, his touch, his hair, his tits, umbro. Uh, course, Chelsea, thumb lift. Well, it was very nice of you gentlemen to come here today, but I would like you to go now, as I do have some knitting I'd like to do. He said so knitting. Oh, I told you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oi, um, And uh, does Dean Saunders stick his tongue out a lot, do you think? You better ask him. It's nothing to do with me, is it? I don't know. OK, Stuart, well, thanks very much. Great interview. Well, you shouldn't ask such stupid questions, should you? You think it's something mm. interesting for a change, all right? It's not mm. my fault. Nothing to do with me. <laughs> oh. Thank you. <laughs>